Okay, let's get into it. Today we're doing a deep dive into, well, a really vital role in healthcare, but one that's often, you know, behind the scenes, the clinical laboratory scientist. Absolutely essential. I mean, this is where so much of the critical diagnostic work happens. It has a huge impact on patient care. So understanding the role is key. Totally. And for this deep dive, we're looking at a guide from Kaplan's Career Center. It focuses on uh, common interview questions for these roles. Right. And it's aimed at both people applying and the employers doing the hiring. So it gives you a pretty rounded view. Exactly. Sort of shows you what the core expectations are. Mm -hmm. So our mission here for you listening is to pull out the key insights from this Kaplan guide. Maybe you're thinking about this career, maybe you're prepping for an interview, or maybe you're just curious about, you know, the science side of patient care. Yeah, we want to help you understand what employers are really looking for beyond just the qualifications on paper. Mm -hmm. How do you talk about your skills effectively? What actually matters in this field? So let's dive into the questions the source lays out. These are designed to get to the heart of whether someone's right for the job. First one up seems pretty foundational. What experience do you have in a clinical laboratory setting? Foundational is the right word. This is about establishing your um, practical competence. Have you actually been in a lab environment? And the source guide suggests highlighting several years of experience, but really stressing the hands-on experience. Yes, hands-on. Specifically with analyzing and interpreting lab test results. That's the core function, right? And <laughs> being comfortable using various lab equipment and techniques. And interestingly, the source also points out you need to mention familiarity with regulations and quality control procedures. That's crucial. It signals you get that it's not just about, you know, mixing chemicals. Mm -hmm. It's a highly regulated environment where accuracy and following the rules are everything. Makes sense. It's a system that has to be reliable. Which leads perfectly into the next question the source brings up. What is your process for quality control and quality assurance in the lab? Ah, QCQA. This is huge. This is where they gauge your rigor, your attention to detail. The source recommends talking about following strict quality control and quality assurance procedures. And it gets specific mentioning things like, regularly checking and calibrating equipment yeah, and right. performing proficiency testing. Hold on, let's unpack those a bit for listeners. Calibration is... Right. Calibration is basically making sure your instruments are reading correctly. You test them against known standards. Got to trust your tools. Okay. And proficiency testing. That's more like an external checkup. <laughs> your lab gets sent samples uh, where the results are already known by the provider. Yeah. And you run them like patient samples. It checks if your whole process, your people, your machines, your methods is getting the right answers. Got it. Like a quality check on the quality checks. So the source says mention calibration, proficiency testing, following standard operating procedures, SOPs, those detailed instructions. Exactly. And critically, documenting and reporting any quality control issues. You can't just fix it and forget it. There needs to be a record. Because the source stresses this is all about ensuring results are accurate and reliable. And in a clinical setting, unreliable results. Well, the consequences can be serious. Misdiagnosis, wrong treatments, the stakes are incredibly high. No kidding. Okay, question three tackles how you keep up in a field that changes fast. How do you stay current with advancements in laboratory medicine? Yeah, the source calls it a dynamic field, and that's putting it mildly. Things change constantly. So staying current is non-negotiable. And the guide mentions the usual suspects. Regularly reading industry publications, attending continuing education courses and conferences. Standard stuff. Standard but necessary. Yeah. But it also includes participating in professional organizations and just talking with colleagues in the field. I like that. It acknowledges that learning isn't just formal. It's about being part of the community, right? Staying connected. Absolutely. It shows you have that innate curiosity and commitment to you know, lifelong learning, which is really essential here. Okay, next up. Question four deals with the tough stuff. How do you handle difficult situations or problems in the lab? Because things do go wrong sometimes. Equipment fails, you get weird results. Right. So how do you react? The source emphasizes, first step, remaining calm and level-headed. Easier said than done under pressure, I bet. Definitely, but crucial. Then it's about being systematic, evaluating the situation, identifying the cause, and then, of course, taking appropriate action to resolve it. And there it is again, documenting and reporting the incident. It's not just about fixing the immediate problem. No, it's about understanding why it happened, preventing it from happening again if possible, and making sure there's a record. It shows responsibility and uh, composure. Which is vital when errors can have such big consequences. 
Okay, question five lets you shine a light on yourself. What do you consider to be your greatest strength as a laboratory scientist? And the source is smart here. It suggests focusing on strengths that are specifically valuable in the lab. Like number one, attention to detail. Can't argue with that one. Also, the ability to analyze and interpret complex data. You're not just generating numbers. You need to understand what they mean. Precisely. And the source adds being very thorough and having strong problem solving skills tying it back to spotting and fixing errors. So it paints a picture of someone who's meticulous, analytical, careful. Reliable, exactly the profile you want handling patient tests. Okay, last question from the course set, number six. This one's very practical. How do you handle and maintain laboratory equipment? Back to the tools of the trade. This shows you respect the instruments and understand their importance. Again, the source points to following standard operating procedures for each piece of equipment. And performing regular maintenance and calibrations, taking care of the machines. Mm -hmm. Plus being proactive about reporting any issues or malfunctions right away. Don't just work around a problem. And basic stuff like making sure it's clean and in good working order before use. It seems obvious, but the link is direct, isn't it? The quality of your equipment care directly impacts the reliability of the results? Absolutely. Garbage in, garbage out applies to poorly maintained equipment too. You need to trust your instruments implicitly. It's interesting looking back at these six questions from the Kaplan Guide. They really cover a lot of ground. Experience, quality, learning, problem solving, strengths, practical skills. They build a whole picture, don't they? And the source does briefly mention that these skills, the precision, the analysis, following procedures, they translate to other roles, too, mm -hmm. like uh, environmental scientist or clinical researcher. Right. It shows the transferable nature of this skill set. Uh -huh. And it notes this is all part of the Kaplan Community Career Center, which offers other job-seeking tools. So while the focus is clinical lab science, the core competencies are broader. Definitely. So summing up these key areas from the source experience, QCQA, staying current, handling problems, knowing your strengths, and equipment care, understanding these seems absolutely critical for anyone in this field. Yeah, if you're interviewing or even just exploring this career, this guy gives you a really clear sense of what's valued, what employers are probing for. It helps you frame your own experience. It's more than just a checklist. It's insight into the professional mindset required. And for you, the listener, thinking through these points really grounds you in what this job entails day to day. Which brings us to a final thought for you to chew on. We place immense trust in lab results for patient care, right? So consider this. How does this intense focus we've seen in the interview questions the emphasis on diligence, on precision, on rigidly following processes? How does that really underscore the unseen, maybe, but utterly vital role the laboratory scientist plays within the whole healthcare system? Something to think about.